So far as I know, I'm the only contractor who does this. Um, and I'll let you see for yourself whether you think it's a viable solution for you know certain situations. Sometimes we can only use three foundations. There's a, a you know a situation where the we just can't access the cripple wall or the foundation itself because of heating ducts being in the way. There'll be pipes, heating ducts, um, practically anything you can imagine. They'll butt up against the wall and make it impossible for us to access it. The other thing is sometimes the foundation along one wall is in such terrible condition. You know we just don't want to attach anything to it. We'd rather. You know, it's just so worthless that there's no point in doing anything at all. So if we find a, you know, a, an entire foundation on one side that's, you know, that that's compromised like that, we can't attach the, you know, the plywood and the bolts and all that stuff to it. The other one, you, sometimes you'll find a situation where, you know, brick foundations are expensive and they'll have done, you know, say three sides of the house and then one of the long sides that you haven't done. And so then you have a brick foundation on one side and you don't want to attach your, you know, your retrofit components to that either. So in those cases, what you do is you take the three foundations that you can access and you put all your retrofit components on those three you know accessible foundations and that way you can get a, actually a very high quality retrofit uh, using this method i had this actually this whole idea i had it um, evaluated by two very very uh, high powered prestigious structural engineers and they you know they said it was actually a pretty good idea and um, anyway it's a great solution if you have this problem so I'm going to show you how three foundation uh, retrofits work. They're actually quite simple. So if our earthquake force is going in this direction, half of the force is going to go on this side and half the force is going to go on this side. And half the resistance is going to be on here. So that green line is the shear wall and bolts and shear transfer ties and all that. So this is going to resist that force. And then this is going to resist that force. So half the force gets resisted right here, because remember half the force is shown by that arrow. Half the force is resisted here, as shown by this arrow. So for earthquake forces going in this direction where the blue arrows are, we're completely just normal old retrofit you know, principles. Just put enough along the wall and you're all set. Now earthquake forces going in this direction is a completely different story, because on this one wall right here, we don't have any foundation, we don't have any connection, we can't do anything, we can't put any retrofit components there. So remember, half the force is going here and half the force is going here. Now this one's fine, we can put a shear wall right here along the foundation, no problem at all. But the half of the force that goes right here, again, there's no foundation, there's no connection, so what's gonna happen is it's gonna rotate like that. It's, it's flexible. So you see these lines right here? That shows the floor is actually flexing along this you know, line right here. Now when it flexes, it's going to rotate the entire floor and it will transfer all that force into this shear wall right here. So this shear wall has to be able to resist this amount of force and this amount of force all along this one side. So when we did your calculations previously, we decided that you know we needed to have eight linear feet on all sides. So just like in this situation here, we had eight feet on this side and then eight feet on this side, which means we were going to need eight feet on this side and eight feet on this side. But we can't put the eight feet on this side, so we're going to have to add it to this side. So then this one ends up being 16 linear feet long rather than eight, and that's basically all a three-sided retrofit looks like. It's really not that complicated but man when you need it you absolutely have to have it a lot of people they'll go well I can only I can only do three sides and then they'll go ahead and they'll replace you know a bunch of foundation that's just so they can you know get some an attachment on the fourth side and it's really not necessary uh, you can use this method and it works just great I'd like to point out that this system really only works if you're doing this with the long foundations of a rectangular building. So for example, this would be considered a long uh, part of the, of, the, of the rectangle. This is the short part of the rectangle. So this rotation principle can only work if you're working with the longer foundations. So 
This would be the longer length, this is the longer length, and that's the only time you can ever apply it. If this foundation is compromised and you put twice the earthquake resisting elements on this side, trying to use rotation, it simply won't work. So that's really critical. You, you know, if, you don't, if you're not working on the long sides, uh, don't even mess with the rest of it. It's just not gonna work. You're gonna have to do some foundation work. You're just simply not gonna get out of it. And then the other thing I'd like to point out is, you know, a lot of the force goes on this, this, uh, this sure wall right here and a lot of it goes this sure wall right here and actually it's very interesting because the uh, engineering community didn't think that very much force went to those you know those those walls on the left and the right that you see but the consortium of universities in research and earthquake education they did some tests at uc berkeley actually and they discovered that those walls on either side actually took a lot more force than they than they thought they would. So for rotation to work, you have to have this, you know, sure wall needs to be in place and in good shape. And this one has to be in good shape as well uh, in order for it to work. So anyway, this is a really handy thing to know about. Uh, if you, you know, if you got a crappy foundation on one side, rather than doing the foundation work, you can do something like this. Well, I hope this video will save you a bunch of money if you're an engineer or a contractor. And uh, please be aware that you should not do this on your own. Uh, make sure if you're a contractor that you've consulted with an engineer who understands rotation. And if you're an engineer, also make sure that you talk to a contractor to make sure it's actually practical to do it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this uh, video, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get more in the future. And if you have any comments, I always answer all my comments. Uh, give me a comment, anything at all, and I will respond, even if it's just to encourage me to keep making videos. Love to hear from anybody. So anyway, I hope to hear from you, and otherwise, uh, just wait for the next video. It'll be coming out soon.